uh, in the entire Africa is me only who has my age met as my deputy. <laughs> I want to thank you very much. Let me start by recognizing His Excellency, the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, who is also uh, in charge or an envoy of African Union, a special envoy for the African Union from the African Union for infrastructure on the continent of Africa. I want uh, first and foremost to thank you for having fine time to be with us. I know how your busy schedule is. I was talking to you another day when you were in Kampala, but uh, you have you made it to this place here, and we are very happy to welcome you. On behalf of the Central Organization of the Trade Unions in Kenya, and also as a president of the Organization of the African Trade Union Unity, uh, which was founded in 1973 in Addis Ababa, I want also to take this opportunity to thank colleagues who have made it here, starting by my brother Chibebe, from Dar es Salaam, my brother Dua Mankwa, who was also busy when I was uh, we started this uh, uh, important meeting early in the week. He was in Rwanda, he was in Kigali, Rwanda, and he has managed to join us here. I want also to thank my own sister Jacqueline Mugo who, like me, she also heads the employers on the continent of Africa. She's their spokesperson. And she's also a member of the ILO governing body, just like me from worker side in this country. You can see how lucky we are in Kenya that two of us, employer and a worker, we sit on the ILO governing body. Uh, two positions are elective positions. And Jacqueline, I want to assure you as I was uh, talking to our colleagues on the continent, our members who are here from 54 African countries, they promised that next year they are giving me last chance as a member of the ILO governing body. <laughs> Themselves. <laughs> so I will start talking to Brother Adua Mankwa. Uh, to see whether we can strike a compromise because it is a unanimous position and uh, our two important labor movements on the continent of Africa must concur on my candidature. But I can assure you, Mangwa, uh, on the side of these members of the organization of the African Trade Union Unity, I have no problem and I have no position. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I love you. Uh, I want also to recognize and thank uh, Adua Mango again for having allowed Brother Moody Giro to be with us the whole week, who is the president of International Trade Union Confederation of the African Region. He has participated, he has been close to me, and uh, I have learned a lot from him as far as uh, the continental issues are concerned. And I want to thank you for that. And this shows the unity we have and the unity we wanted to forge between the Organization of the African Trade Union Unity and the International Trade Union Confederation as members of one family who can complement each other. And this is why I have said all the time that when it comes to internationalizing our issues and we want to have international solidarity, we will continue working closely with the International Trade Union Confederation. Uh, Your Excellency, OATU has a, a membership of about 74 affiliates from 54 African countries. And this is their fourth second General Council. 
And I want to thank all of them for wonderful attendance, which is almost 100%. And to thank our brothers from Turkey, from all Chinese of Federation of Trade Unions who are here from Italy, and from other places who support us and whom we work closely with, who are with us here. Your Excellency, I want also to recognize one of very important Kenyan who would have been with you on the podium, but due to scarcity of space on this small podium, it's not with you there. This is no another person other than General Julius Waweru Karangi, man who has done a commendable job and big contribution to the leadership of our country, and who is currently taking care of workers' money at the National Social Security Fund. Some of us, we are, we are, we are beneficiaries of his good counseling, guidance, and good leadership and protection of mega workers' funds that they contribute as their social security. Having said that, Your Excellency, you, like me, were aware that Africa, Asia, and Latin America, all of us, we attained our independence through the pressure of trade unions. And I did beg you, because I have no written speech just like my Secretary General, I begged you that uh, you have everything that I would have said. You have history of the labor movement in this country. And uh, when Arisik Masood was making his speech, I did remind you that Arisik, 100%, he grew up like you. He's a man who had a lot of problems right away from the university. And your history also has a rich history. It's not a history of yesterday on leadership. Currently, you are heading a very key importance on the continent of Africa as a special envoy for infrastructure. And uh, as our guest of honor, I think it is opportune for my colleagues to know the people that support workers and people that we decide to invite and talk to you what is their history. You have a rich history. And the problem with human beings, not only us here in Kenya, they forget very quickly. I better dwell on your history, and I sit down to wait and hear from you. This famous politician has several nicknames, including Aguambo, which means the mysterious one. Raila Odinga has oftentimes been described as the enigma in Kenyan politics. To me, because my course, Your Excellency, my specialization in labor movement is organizing. I'm an organizer. And you are a terrible organizer I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Why do I say so, General? <laughs> Raila Odinga would be with him <laughs> until 2 a.m. in the morning. You leave one another to go and have a rest in the night. When you put on your TV at 10 the following day, He's about 500 kilometers away from where you met, addressing Kenyans, being made an elder of that community, and you are still tired. That is why, to me, you are a wonderful organizer. No other sophisticated politician fits the bill of such a title. I look at Raila Molo Dinga's life, sheds priceless details that portrays a towering figure who exerts enormous and unrivaled influence. 
sometimes why we fail, we calculate our gains before we reach our destination as far as our achievements are concerned. With him is a man who is prepared to take any task without price, so long as it reflects the aspirations of the suffering poor. For years, the long-term politician has dominated the political influence, crafting a, form a formidable force to be reckoned with those who are perceived to be his competitors. It is with that respect that he attracts both critics, diehards, and supporters. To us, as people who come from the pressure group, pressurizing for issues that are related to the laboring poor, we have always admired you. U.S. President Barack Obama, Obama's father, was from the same village where you are born and where you come from and where you are county is. And it is this background that sometimes Kenyans ask themselves that if that particular account was not inside Kenya, then you would have not had an opportunity to have wonderful people who have made a remarkable a global impact that we will remain reading, thinking for now and for years to come. Raila Mododinga was born on 7th of January 1945 in Western Kenya at a place called Maseno. Somebody from Mongo, from Congo, uh, I think when we had, uh, when we have elections in Kisumu, Sometimes I invite you to my rural home on those sides. You would always pass at the hospital from where Honorable Railo Molodinga was born. From a family, Mama was known as Mera Jumo Dinga, and Baba was known as Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, also a freedom fighter, our first vice president of the Republic of Kenya. He received his primary education in Kisumu, a primary school in Kisumu. Now, it's one of our nation schools called Maranda Second School. It still has a primary school in Western Kenya and next to Bondo University. Starting in 1962, he spent two years at the Hada Institute, part of the University of Lay of Leipzig in Germany. He then earned a scholarship to the Technical School in Magdeburg, East Germany, where he graduated in 1970 with a degree in mechanical engineering. He's an engineer by profession. After completing his graduate studies in 1970, Raila returned to Kenya, where he became a lecturer at the University of Nairobi. 1971, while still teaching at the University of Nairobi, he established what would become East African Spectre Limited Company of manufacturing liquid petroleum gas cylinders. In 1974, he left the University of Nairobi and began working at the Kenya Bureau of Standards as a group standards manager. Four years later, he was promoted to deputy director of the Kenya Bureau of Standards. 
1982, he was falsely accused of collaborating with the plotters of a failed coup attempt against the then president, the president at that particular time. He was charged with treason and imprisoned without trial for six years. Shortly after his release, he was rearrested for involvement with activities pushing for, pushing for multi -party, party democracy in Kenya in September 1988. In other words, he is the father of multi party democracy in the Republic of Kenya and democracy as far as, far as our democracy is concerned. He was again released from prison on June 12, 1989, but a year later he was arrested again. He was again released from prison on June 21, 1991, in October of the same year, and left for Norway. His decision to leave his motherland was probably because of the assassination threats he claimed to have received from the then Kenyan government. In 1992, he returned to Kenya and joined a political party called Forum for the Restoration of Democracy, Ford. He was elected vice chairman of the General Purposes Committee of this party. In the same year, in 1992, that party split into two factions. Fort Kenya led by Raila, by his own father, the late Jaramogo Gingodinga, and Ford Asili led by another politician who recently passed on, Honorable Kenneth Matiba. Raila was appointed deputy director of elections of that party. The same year he won a seat in parliament and began to be known as one of the initiators, planners, and a senior father of multi-party democracy in the Republic of Kenya. He ran for presidency in the 1997 general elections, finishing that but keeping his seat in parliament. After the elections, he began to support the then president who had won the retired President Moy's government, leading to a merger between his party and the ruling party at that time, Kanu. From June 2001 to 2002, he served on the cabinet of President Moy as an, as an energy minister. The same year, he was also elected the party's secretary general. That is, Kanu is our independence party. Unfortunately, I happen to be a life member of that party. In 2002, the then president, the retired president, had a, jo a choice of a presidential candidate to succeed him. But the right Honorable Raila Molodinga was opposed to that candidate, and he left that party to form his party known as Liberal Democratic Party. I, I just want you to understand, because yesterday we were here, particularly the young lawyer from Nigeria, who is the, general sec who is the Secretary General of the uh, Nigerian Labor Congress, uh, who in the future we don't know where he will end up. He might become a president of the Republic of Nigeria. To know the path, the path to democracy, the path that once can follow to exert pressure on a regime and create changes such as the one 
we enjoy in this country. In Kenya today, you can say anything under the sun. No detention, nobody will harass you. And this is all attributed to him. This is Liberal Democratic Party joined with the National Alliance of Kenya to form the National Rainbow Coalition. In the latter part of the year, he was appointed a Minister of Roads, Public Works, and Housing in the new President Moy's cabinet. In 2005, following a political controversy, the, president, the then President dismissed his entire cabinet and reassembled it again without the right Honorable Raila Odinga and his allies and those who supported him, leading him to form a new coalition known as the Orange Democratic Party, a party that he leads to date. In 2007, he ran for, the, for president again, narrowly losing. This was disputed. He also disputed the results. And we had a problem in this country with the spontaneous widespread violence and rioting broke out. Brother Kwesu Amankwa, I will remember that you were president at that time. He was the chairman of the African Union, and he had come to Nairobi to form a very formidable uh, peace uh, 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 arrangement of leaders. Uh, and indeed, eventually, uh, the, his team invited Kofi Annan to mediate in this country, to mediate for peace. As a result of the violence following the 2007 elections, former United Nations, as I've said, Kofi Annan uh, had to come to work out and see. And indeed, uh, uh, on, uh, I think it was around April 17th of the 2008, uh, when we firstly celebrated the coalition government between those who had claimed to have won election and his team. In 2013, he ran again for president again, narrowly losing. At first challenging the results, when the Supreme Court upheld them, he conceded the elections. In 2017, he ran for elections again as a president in which he lost, challenged the results at the Supreme Court and won after the Supreme Court nullified the results of the presidential vote. That was the first elections in this country to be contested and be nullified. A new presidential election was ordered to take place in October of the same year, but the right Honorable Braila Molo Odinga refused to participate, terming it already predetermined. So he saw no need again of going to be humiliated for what would be obvious results. He was later to be sworn in at a public rally as the people's president in a move that threw the country into a political confusion. <laughs> as the then victor of the elections was being sworn in, he had also his day and he was sworn in and he remains in the minds of Kenyans as people's president. On March 9, 2018, and I want to give you a very brief history before this March event. In January 2018, I appeared on television, and I appealed to both of them, President Uhuru Kenyatta, to swallow his pride, and the right Honorable Raila Molodinga to swallow his pride and come together for the sake of our country. Little did I know on March 9th, after January, after one month, after February, the third month that was January, on 9th, they surprised everybody when we did put on our televisions in the morning that they had had a wonderful 
uh, handshake that brought lasting peace in this Republic of Kenya. Today, if you open your newspapers, you will see people talking about a new constitution. Uh, Kenya requires to revisit our constitution. I think two years ago, I proposed it during Labor Day, and Sister Jacqueline, you were there. And everybody saw me as a person whose head is not proper. Why am I asking Kenyan politicians and leaders to revisit the national constitution and come up with a document that, it, that is all inclusive for the purposes of creating peace in this country? Indeed, it is now a debate in this country, and in near soon, or near future, uh, they, after that handshake, him and President Uhuru, they formulated a body to look into ways and means of coming up with proposals to amend the new constitution. So the labor movement can set an agenda and give guidance or pro bring about national guidance. We do it here in Kenya. Labor movement. You suggest, you think you are just making a suggestion. And it becomes a national debate. Uh, major works that has been carried out with Raila Odinga are so many, including awards that he has achieved. Raila Odinga, the enigma in Kenyan politics, the flame of freedom, an autobiography detailing his life and struggles was launched in October 2013, he has his biography. Awards that he has had. He has several awards among them. In 2008, Raida was awarded an honorary doctor of laws degree from the University of Nairobi in Kenya. He was awarded an honorary degree from Florida and M University in the United States in 2012. In 1973, those early years, he also exchanged wedding vows with his wonderful wife, Mama Ida, who is also fortunately or unfortunately related to me. She's my sister cousin. So in other words, this guy is my brother-in-law. <laughs> they have children, a good family, and so on. He was appointed to mediate the Ivorian crisis in 2010. 2011, which involved, 2010 to 2011, which involved widespread violence following elections in Ivory, disputes such as the one we had. He worked closely with President Mwai Kibaki, our immediate former president in 2010, to pass a new constitution for Kenya, which moved some, which removed some of the powers on presidency back to the people. The new constitution that we enjoy, which was promulgated in 2010, he did tireless job to make sure that we have a new constitution. In that constitution, in the Bill of Rights, workers are reflected there. Freedom of our association, freedom of choice of your own organization, trade union organization, freedom to strike, freedom to assemble is reflected in the Article 41 of our national constitution. And more importantly, collective bargaining agreement in Kenya is a constitutional issue. 
it is in the Constitution because of us working closely with the experts who are working on that Constitution. I want to end there by honoring my sister Jacqueline that uh, she's a wonderful girl. We have worked together. We have given support to one another. And uh, we have a problem on the continent of Africa, which hinders issues related to salaries or wages. Unless this continent goes fully into manufacturing, we will not be able to put some mechanism to place or to grow our economies so that they can absorb thousands and thousands of young men and women leaving our institutions of high learning. We must 100% go into manufacturing. Yesterday we were challenged by Professor Herman Manyora that Africa as a whole cannot be, it has no any country that has manufactured a mobile phone. It's not only mobile phone, we need to go into manufacturing of so many sophisticated issues for purposes of exports. If you are not in business of export, then there is no way you can grow the economy and create employment for your people. I want to thank you, are good people. Brother Adua Mankwa, you can see the attendance of uh, our general council has been 100%. And this shows the confidence in leadership. You can have a wonderful party, but you will be surprised nobody attends that party because the organizers of that party people or the invitees have no confidence in them. Leadership is confidence. Leadership is support. Leadership is sincerity, honesty, and tackling specific issues that concerns our people on this continent. So I want to thank you all. We in the Secretariat of Owatu, we are your servants. We are at your service, and we will continue rendering that service unabated without fear, favor, or any reservation as labor leaders. And when the kitchen is hot, when nobody wants to go to that kitchen, it's where a labor leader enjoys now in that particular kitchen. <clears throat> I think if you ask somebody like John Wolata, Jean Wolata, he will tell you that when the kitchen is hot, that is where a labor leader is required to be. <laughs> I thank you very much. I recognize you all. I, go, I recognize our, our ambassador, Abdullahi uh, Diallo one of the founders of Owatu, together with the late Dennis J.D. James, uh, uh, James, uh, James Dennis, James Akumu. Uh, Dennis Akumu, and Demba Diop, and Mesha, uh, people who steered this organization up to where we are. And uh, as I go to sit down, Your Excellency, the right Honorable Raila Molodinga, coming back to our local issues. I would appeal to you as we work closely with His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta, not to relent on corruption, not to bow on pressure from politicians. He should, be, he should remain assertive on corruption and ethics of this country. And I think, I want to repeat, he should not bow to political pressure. As I have said, when the kitchen is hot, it's when leaders are counted. And me, when things are not hot, members of my family will know. Because I feel as if I'm sick, 
What makes me happy is controversy. <laughs> so I would appeal to our president not to bow to pressure. There is nothing like that. And I was telling my colleagues, if I was elected today a president, I will only serve for one term, and the rest of the term they will say, come. And I will also introduce a certain degree of dictatorship to make things happen. Let me invite you, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, to talk to us. <laughs>